All right, to the New York Post, Daniel, help our on, on this, how doable this is. Obviously, it's still a kind of front burner issue. That's the gist we're getting from the White House. Uh, is it and how doable is it? What, what are you hearing, Dan? I think it's pretty doable. Look, there are a lot of Republicans on Capitol Hill that want tax cuts and they want tax reform. Obviously, people want it in general and it becomes a little trickier when you get into the nitty gritty and you get into the details. But in principle, it should be easy somewhat easy to get something going here and I think President Trump would be wise to use his first month in office to try to get a big legislative accomplishment something that all these executive orders doesn't do and it might be good for him to lean on Congress to try to get something done and try to you know as like a snowball effect to try to build momentum for the rest of his agenda. You know, it's interesting, too, Dan, because it's always the devil in the details here. The president is a fan of big tax cuts, but his incoming Treasury Secretary, Steve Mnuchin, has already gone on record saying maybe for the upper income they'd be revenue neutral or not, uh, or net no tax cut, uh, that their rate goes down, but they'll end up paying roughly the same if we limit their deductions. So a lot of little details to work out that many working on this uh, you know, in Congress as we speak, don't share. But but is it, you know, is it going to be the kind of thing that will be a, a task just to get Republicans all together on this? What are you hearing on that front? I, I think people are just unsure because they don't know exactly where the White House stands on this. They know in general that there is an agreement between the Hill and and the White House. But I think that in three weeks we begin the discussion of where, what are the details, what are the disagreements, where can there be some sort of commonality. The question also is, is, is he going to roll some sort of infrastructure legislation into it? We always heard about that before right. he was sworn into office. We haven't heard much about it, but what I noticed in the airline executive meeting, he mentioned rebuilding the airports, and he seemed, and I may, maybe I'm reading too much into it, he seemed to roll the re rebuilding of the airports in with this tax talk. Seems to me, what if he brings them sort of hand in hand and, and does something together like that? It's not, again, a lot is just unknown. We don't know where they're going to do. They haven't given us many signals. But this is one of the clearest ones that they want to do it really soon, two or three weeks, to get something in the table. Of course, it will take weeks or maybe months afterwards to finally have something that, that he can actually sign, probably. Now, the impact of any tax code, as you know better than, than most, is... Uh, uh, how soon it, it comes into being and whether it's soon enough to be retroactive. I talked to a very highly placed congressional source on this issue, and the thinking was if we can get something together by the summer, it would be retroactive. If we can't uh, and it's pushed into the fall, it won't be retroactive. Big tax cut is big tax cut. Obviously, uh, a retroactive one is all the better, but uh, how will that go down? If this is delayed, it, it, I guess the thinking would be better a delayed ta tax cut than none at all. Yeah, look, if it gets delayed, I mean, you got to look at it in the context of his entire agenda. If this first thing that he starts pushing gets delayed, then everything else gets delayed and it becomes right. a lot harder for him to do things, which is why it's, I think it is important for him to push these things. So, uh, you know, look, he, he's been busy with the Hill trying to get his cabinet confirmed. Now he has a Supreme Court justice. I think there will be serious momentum. I think they could do it well before the summer, given that there just isn't much on the legislative agenda at this point that he's actually pushing. And I think with the White House behind it, if, if President Trump uses the might of his office and does it wisely, I, I, I don't see why it couldn't get done. Last question, you've been very patient with him, Dan. This, this idea of a border tax, something like that, that, that a lot of big U.S. importers, multinationals fear, so they would read into this what, 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 the, what the, the president giveth, he taketh away. So whatever tax cuts or regulation cuts they get, you know, the flip side is they're, 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 they're feeling the pinch from their business uh, and how it would be impacted. But how do you think, or are they weighing in that building behind you the impact on multinationals here? Because it, it could be a split read. Sure, look, he has multinational CEOs come into his office every, every week or every day almost, it right. seems like today and, and earlier this week. Look, I, it, it's obviously a concern that the tax, I think, is going to get more pushback from Republicans who just don't want taxes in general and so I think that might be a little bit of a harder stretch if he can roll it into building a Mexican wall doing the sorts of things and have actually tangible projects that may be popular that he can use that to build momentum I think that might be a smarter strategy and then maybe he can get some traction I think that sort of stuff might be a little trickier unless he does some sort of big big package and really encompasses all that we're talking about in one big legislation all right, Dan, always good catching up with you, buddy. Daniel Halper, The New York Post, Washington.
bureau chief 